How is anger created? Well, anger is created by the desire to avoid the, or sorry, the desire to have our addictions met so that we don't, can avoid certain other feelings. Yep. Basically, that's how anger is created. Yep. It's a desire to feel more powerful, desire to feel in control, desire to feel that we have our life in order uh -huh. and so forth. And when we don't have those feelings, we revert to rage in order to get our environment to conform back to our personal desires. Yep. And so it's a desire also to manipulate the environment in some way. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say a lot of anger is actually very passive, like mm -hmm. passive aggressive. Even just a little tiny, you know, a little tiny resistance is often rage driving it. Yep. We're not allowed to express the rage, so what we do is we just be resistive. And that's a way of expressing our anger and displeasure about our environment not meeting our addictions anymore. Yeah. And uh, it's obviously very damaging to do such things to our soul. So basically, you're saying when our addictions aren't met and we have the desire for them to still be met, mm -hmm. we can get angry. But does everyone who stops having their addictions being met do they, or, or, and still want them to be met, do they always resort to anger? Yes. Yeah. Everyone. Um, in fact, it's the only course of action unless you're willing to see your addictions. Yes. So, so you have two options basically whenever you have addictions not being met. You, you can feel that you have the addiction mm -hmm. and that would, that would mean then that you wouldn't get angry at all. Yes. By the time you've gotten to the angry, angry stage, you've already demonstrated you have no desire to know what the addiction is. Yes. Right? So, so the anger is really demonstrating the lack of desire for the addiction. So everyone's going to get angry but they might express that or display that or behave in different ways. Correct. In order to get the addiction met again, but... Correct. So they'll be, they'll be they angry. might be manipulative, they might be verbally or emotionally manipulative, they might be passive aggressive, they might be absolutely aggressive, mm -hmm. they might be in a rage, they might resort to violence. Yeah. There's a whole range of behaviour that we resort to in our anger yeah. in order to go back to getting our addictions met. Yeah. But it's all angry. The whole lot's angry. Yeah, it's just a group of angry emotions <laughs> driving the whole thing. We can even internalise the anger, can't we, and punish ourselves in we an effort can, to but manipulate it's, others? Yes, but yeah. it's always got a purpose of manipulation of others. Yes. It's, got, it's, it's very, very rare that we revert to self-punishment without there being a motivation of manipulating others. Yeah. So, in fact, I, I don't, I've never really seen too many people resort to that place. Mm -hmm. you know, most people who resort to self-punishment are generally always attempting to manipulate somebody else through it. Mm -hmm. the, there, are f there might be a few exceptions to that, but, but generally that's the case. Mm. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think here we've also raised three issues that we'd like to discuss with people about what it does and we've covered this also in the what is anger section to a degree yeah but but if we look at some of the purposes of the anger sure. like of, I suppose the reasons why we want to create it yeah so 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 we've looked at how it's created it's created because we want our addictions met and they're not being met so we decide we've decided internally that they need to be met they should be met and that it's somebody else's responsibility to meet them or yep. something else's responsibility to meet them. And so we so, choose to engage <laughs> our rage as a result. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's a choice. It's yep. a free will choice we're making. We're, we're actually, it's actually a choice made by our soul and driven generally by our intellect to, to happen. We, we, know it's, we know it at the time too. That's mm -hmm. the sad thing. Most people who revert to rage know they're being angry and they know they're doing it to manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> To try to force the environment back, back into a state that they feel comfortable in. Again. Yeah, back to comfort, back to yeah. meeting their addictions. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we most of the time know that's what we're trying to do. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I could read a quote from something, from sure. some notes here <clears throat> that you've prepared. Anger is our chosen response mm -hmm. towards our environment for no longer meeting our addictive demands and expectations. Yes, and I think that's a very important statement that yeah. it's our chosen response. Yes. We like doing it <laughs> <laughs> because the alternative is too terrible 
for us. Yeah. The alternative, which is to feel the addiction and acknowledge we have one, which often feels shameful, and then going into the underlying fear that we have, which often feels terrifying, mm -hmm. and then the underlying grief that's generally suppressed by the fear, which feels very, very sad, yeah. right? We want to avoid all of those emotions. We've now got you know, three sets of emotions by this layer to, to address at least, and so we want to go back to having control over our environment yeah. rather than dealing with all of those emotions. Yeah. And, and it's a, it lacks personal responsibility doing it, but we choose to do it, mm -hmm. and, and it's a choice. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a real decided choice inside of our soul to go there. And because it's such a strong decision to go there, it instantly damages our soul further. Yeah. And this is why God made it that way, is because it, God wants to give us the feedback that this kind of anger is, a, it is very, very bad for damaging. not only, and damaging for ourselves and for our environment and for other people. Yeah. And, and it's the precursor to physical, sexual and emotional violence mm -hmm. towards others. And which, which obviously causes a very rapid degradation in our soul condition if we engage in those yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can I read another sentence from your notes here? Sure. Anger is created in order to feel more personal power or control over our own pain. Yes, and this is what we need to start seeing it as, is it's a personal selfish response. Mm -hmm in order to avoid just what's going on inside of ourselves. It's got nothing to do really with anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's got everything to do with what we're attempting to avoid inside of ourselves. And this is how we need to see it. We want power and control over what is happening inside of ourselves. We don't want to feel out of control yeah. with regard to our painful emotions. We want to feel in control of these painful emotions. And that's what causes us to revert to rage and anger mm -hmm. and that's what causes us to project it outwards from ourselves because we don't want to feel what's going on inside of ourselves mm -hmm. yeah mm. so all of this stuff is all an avoidance even fear is like that too an avoidance of what's going on inside of yourself and you can justify it any way you want but in the end this is inside of you and if you ever want to be at one with God or ever want to be a loving person you're going to need to have ways to release all of this without reverting to the attempt to control your environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Or even the attempt to control our own pain. We're exactly. going to have to move through that, aren't we? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And this is what, and we keep saying this in all of these questions, the attempt to control our pain or to suppress our pain and to not feel our pain is the major cause of all of the unloving actions that are ever taken. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if, if you just allow yourself to feel your pain, you will immediately improve in your condition of love because you will no longer take actions that damage other people or yourself. Because you'll no longer act to suppress the pain. Correct. Yeah. So, so just that one simple act, that one simple change, and it's quite a difficult change <laughs> yeah. for most people to make, yeah. but it's a simple change in the sense that it's simple to understand. The willingness to feel our own pain will cause us to shift through all sorts of unloving behavior that we would have pre previously reverted to yeah. just because we were trying to avoid our own pain. Yeah, and, and that probably leads to the final yes. quote. Yes, yeah. Anger is a desire within us to blame and punish our environment for what is within ourselves. Yes, so you can see that it's like we're, we're desiring to not take any responsibility for what's inside of us. Now, I'm not saying here that we have to take responsibility for what, who created it, because mm -hmm. most of the time we did not create, or a fair portion of the time, we did not create a lot of the original damage. Mm -hmm. We have since made choices that are unloving, which definitely have created damage. So we're not immu immune from the creation of our own damage. Yes. In, in other words, there are things within us that were created by others, and then we made unloving choices ourselves, and, that ha and so the damage created by that has been created by ourselves, mm -hmm. not others. Mm -hmm. And there are both sets of emotions within us. They're within us. Only we can control their release. Only we can release them. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it for us. 
So every time we blame our environment and try to gain power our, over our environment and try to affect our environment in some way, all we're doing is telling ourselves that we're not taking any personal responsibility for what's within us. We don't believe that we should have to feel what's within us. Right? And we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. We do. Because we are the only ones who can. Yeah. Once it's in us, nobody else can release it for us. Only we can release it. So we do have to take responsibility for what's in us, even though we don't need to take responsibility for everything that's in us in terms of its creation. We do have to take responsibility for everything that's in us in terms of its release. And this is it's so important that we understand this. Yeah. And because most of us don't want to do that, yeah. we revert to anger. We don't want to take that responsibility. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have to feel everything. We want the people who created it to have to feel it. And if it's not them, we want somebody else to have to feel it instead. Yeah. You know, and the reality is, you know, for many of us, our parents have died or whatever, so we no longer feel we can blame them. And so what we do is we blame everybody else for what they did, mm. which, which is basically causing damage to everyone else because we do not want to take responsibility for feeling what's inside of us ourselves without hurting others. Yeah. That's our primary reason for the anger. And it's such a damaging emotion and we need to understand and recognise that it is. And there is only one way to feel it that's in harmony with love. And that is without projecting it on anyone else. Yeah. And, and that is an exercise of your will. You can do that by using your will. Mm -hmm. right? And this is how powerful your will is. Yeah. But for most of us, our will is exercised completely different to that. What we do is we exercise our will to blame everybody, damage, you know, hurt anybody else, punish them. We, blame, we want to get everything back to how it was. And so, you know, we manipulate and we control and that's how we use our will. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to do that, we will never be at one with God. We're never going to understand love and we are never going to be happy because we're going to continually create more pain for our own soul. Yeah. So I feel it's very important that we understand the relationship between these three groups of emotions. Yep. So I suppose that's what we could say in conclusion to this mm -hmm. whole session mm -hmm. is that we, we really need to make sure that we understand the relationship between all of these emotions. So the relationship between fear, grief, firstly, you know, the underlying causal grief, the fear that covers it, the, the addictions that, that we use to get away from our fears, and then the anger that we use to manipulate people into meeting our addictions. <laughs> we need to understand the relationship between these emotions before we can really understand any of our emotional problems. And so what we'd like to recommend to everybody to do is to actually go through these FAQs, these ones that we've covered just so far on emotion and the one on how the human soul functions, and see what their belief systems are about why they feel they should be able to revert to anger, yeah. why they feel they should have their addictions met, and why they feel avoidance of their causal emotion is actually going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel it's been, a, this session in particular has been a great session in terms of an introduction to the really core uh, principal emotions that affect us negatively and mm. have the, and that we have the power to deal with in a different way and change our lives around completely mm. um, and certainly grow in love and grow towards God uh, and thank you so much for your time today because I feel that um, everything we covered is so powerful and um, I would encourage people viewing this session to get really honest and real with yourself uh, living in denial of what's within us just delays our progress even further. Mm. And so I know that coming to grips with the fact that we've got lots of addictions and lots of anger and the fact that our pain is never gonna leave us until we deal with it can feel fairly um, well painful and difficult. And confronting and, and confronting all those things. And confronting and we have all these judgments. <laughs> and humiliating and, and all these other things. <laughs> all these things, all these things. Yeah. But um, delaying the process doesn't make it easier. No. Uh, and actually commencing the progress when we do it sincerely things do start to feel better and more real and we begin to work through all these false beliefs that we have so yes. i would really encourage you to 
yeah. start that journey. So what we're going to do next time we get together with you is we're going to start answering people's individual questions yeah. about their emotions and their emotional feelings and what they feel about different things with their relationship with God and so forth. And we're going to focus on looking at the different emotions in, that are contained within these questions that individuals have asked. There's, there's quite a few hundred of them. <laughs> so uh, obviously this is going to happen over months of period or, or perhaps even years, <laughs> the way it's going. But um, well, what we'd like to do is cover a lot of these emotional questions because it is such an essential part of your future development. You need to allow yourself to become sensitive emotionally. You're going to need to become sensitive to God's emotions if you're ever going to become at one with God. And, and to feel God's love, you're going to need to feel all of your resistances to feeling it. So, so we'd really like to encourage you to feel your emotions and be more honest about your emotions and more honest about your fears and your addictions and your anger and, and all of those and all the denials that you have because that will help you in your relationship with God. So hopefully this session has helped you a little along that path. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for your time. And we'd See like you. to thank the time for Mary as well, who's done all of this interviewing and, and Lena and Igor who are behind our cameras as well. Yeah. Thanks guys.